It's a great question. I right, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for joining Top Investor Talk. What will be changed? Supply chains uh, will get uh, modified. Why not put it more straightforward, less dependent on China? It's not really just directed uh, at China. Well, do you find the bargains? If we started buying just like uh, the sovereign funds, what if we fail? More or less like the flu, we will learn to live with it. We are navigating in an unknown water because of the pandemic crisis, and you have weathered of various crises during the past several decades. What makes this one different? Well, this is a completely unique、uh, crisis. Their economies—it's unprecedented. Nobody shuts an economy because terrible things happen.、Uh, unemployment. Goes very very high.、Uh, people lose their savings. Economies are very complicated,、uh, and to restart them, it is not like restarting your car or your motorcycle, where you put a key in and you turn it, it goes on and you drive.、Um, it doesn't work like that. Uh, and, and part of the reason people's savings go down because they're not working,、um, that that when they're allowed to work, they tend not to spend as much money、uh, as consumers. They want to rebuild their savings to make themselves safe. They feel even stronger about that because the world itself is uncertain. So,、yeah. so that means there's there's less purchasing. If there's less purchasing, then you don't need all the things that are being manufactured for you to purchase. So, so it takes a while before consumers get used to coming back and making money,、uh, and, and, and that slowness、uh, is is normal.、Uh, but but it does get solved、uh, over time. You said that、uh, the crisis will wipe out five trillion U.S. dollars of United States economy,、uh, which is a quarter of United States 2019 output. And、uh, no economist expect a V-shaped recovery in terms of the fundamental economy. But what we see in the stock market, we see a very much like V-shaped rally. So, how to understand this kind of discrepancy? Well, that's a great question. So, the reason the stock market has uh, uh, gone up、uh, very, very quickly、uh, is 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 for two reasons.、Uh, the first is, is that there are a lot of very big companies uh, uh, in the United States that have continued to do very well,、uh, and and those are uh, companies uh, like uh, Amazon. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, as well as Walmart, our biggest retailer,、uh, those companies were doing fine anyhow. So part is market overweighting. The second reason、uh, is is that、um, there's enormous optimism on vaccines. Most people now believe, given the number of attempts、uh, and the and the different types of vaccines. That are being developed and tested, that that it's likely、uh, there will be a vaccine much faster. The crisis is, is is not over yet. Do you expect what will be the main legacy of this crisis? I mean, what will be changed permanently? Even the crisis is over. There will be many changes, like there always are. Uh, when societies around the world go through uh, massive uh, uh, dislocation, uh, one one of the changes uh, will be uh, uh, the, the use of uh, 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 information technology and and uh, IT uh, to uh, communicate. Like what we did now. Yes, 
just like I'm talking to you, I think, uh, you know, uh, the fact that borders are closed everywhere in the world now, uh, it's amazing. That affects the way people think, uh, and they will make some adjustments. So, for example, um, uh, supply chains uh, will get uh, modified, and, and the reason for that uh, it isn't that they don't like any individual country. Uh, it, it's because uh, if you've been denied supply uh, for your business uh, and, and you're highly concentrated someplace uh, and you couldn't get any um, uh, supply to sell, you couldn't get goods to sell. So you talk about the supply chain. So you firmly believe that the companies in the future will sacrifice some profits to be more resilient. It doesn't mean there'll be massive changes, but it means on the margin there'll be changes. And, and it, it may just be that the growth in that company uh, uh, doesn't go to the same place. There'll just be more diversification. But, but I, I don't think uh, this, this will revolutionize the world, but it will happen. Um, you know, in terms of diversification. Yeah, you use the word diversification of supply chain, but why not put it more straightforward, less dependent on China? It's, it's not really just directed uh, at, at China. It, it's, it's really, um, if, if you have all of your supply anywhere in the world and you can't get it, that, that's imprudent. It's not sensible. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be modifications. China, on the other hand, uh, is rapidly uh, internalizing uh, their economy so, so, so that the enormous dependence on exports that China had 20 years ago has dramatically decreased. Uh, and the booming nature uh, of, of China's um, uh, economy uh, is going to be increasingly handled uh, internally. If today's globalization slow down or maybe reverse, will we, in a better word, richer, safer, or geopolitically more stable? Well, that's a, that's a great question, uh, and, and you, could, you, you could actually answer any of those three ways. Um, uh, and it depends from whose perspective uh, you're, you're looking. Uh, I, I think if there was a radical change, uh, that, would, that would very much destabilize uh, the world. Uh, uh, I, I think if it's a gradual change, um, it, it will probably result in, in some very modest decrease uh, in the global uh, growth rate, uh, if, if you do that. Uh, it, it may, uh, in those individual countries uh, where supply chains are being moved to, uh, or if it's back to the host country, um, you know, may, may create a better politics uh, internally with less anger uh, that may be better uh, for, for those countries in their form of management. Uh, but, but, but if there is involved with, with the process, you know, anger uh, and um, targeting uh, and, and, you know, disruption uh, of normal relations between countries, that's a terrible thing because that imperils um, not just global growth, uh, but a whole variety of other uh, issues uh, which, which are uh, potentially very disruptive. Uh, to, to the global economy. So, so part of this is in the execution uh, rather than just an outright conclusion uh, which you were asking me to make. Let's talk about something about the investment. You know, to investors today, the biggest challenge now is how to put capital at risk with any kind of confidence when the outlook is extremely un certain. So how? Well, you have to make certain assumptions uh, about the future, like you do with all 
investments. But we know nothing about the future in terms of this no. pandemic. Yes, but, but if you assume that this pandemic has a limited life, because all logic would tell you it has a limited life. Temporary. Then you basically have to look at the world and say, uh, what do you think will come back the fastest? What do you think will come back the slowest? Uh, and then you, you decide whether you want something that, that comes back faster or slower and it's dependent on the price, okay? So, for example, we have a, a large company uh, that today is 100% closed. It's called Merlin, and it's the second biggest theme park company in the, in the world. And we just invested more money in this because we know when they start opening this, uh, the attractions, People won't come back all in one day, but a year from when they open it, this will be fine, right? So the question is, what price can you invest? Uh, looking at things as if they'll be fine a year from when you're allowed to go back. If, if you're investing in a restaurant and they only let 50% of it get used, um, you, you can't make much money in a restaurant. And, and so part of it is a bit of a guessing game uh, of, of when different companies will go back to, to prosperity. What is Blackstone doing now? I mean, uh, people always say, do not waste crisis. We see the sovereign fund in the Middle East uh, already start their buying spree. So well, do you find the target and well, do you find the bargains? So, so what we did at the start is we started buying just like uh, the sovereign funds. We started buying stocks <coughs> of companies, um, particularly in real estate where we knew how good those companies were. The, the stocks were down 60%. Uh, and you buy them when they're down 60 and you wake up a few weeks later and they're only down 30. That's pretty good. Uh, so the first thing you do is you buy stocks and also debt, debt securities uh, in technical called securitizations uh, of, of different types of real estate, <clears throat> knowing that for technical reasons, they were very beaten down. And then you buy them and they pop up uh, in large part because the, the government was pouring money to stabilize that. And so, so we invested very large amounts of money in those type of investments. It takes a while before we can buy companies or uh, real estate properties because nobody wants to sell them at the bottom, right? So, so that will take a, a little while for us to do. We also have the opportunity uh, to make rescue lending. So, so you have to have a view around the world of what's going to happen, and, and you start deploying money uh, on, on that basis. Uh, and, and so we, we have more money uh, at Blackstone, my company, uh, $152 billion that, that's not invested now. Final question, Steve. Uh, in today's talk, you are very optimistic about the humankind will get the vaccine. Uh, the question is, what if we fail? Well, if we fail, um, which, which to me is un unimaginable just because I've talked to a lot of the people who are working on these things. And in other words, it's just not television for me or, or reading a newspaper. Uh, but. But if, if we fail, then we, we, we end up in a world uh, that um, uh, is, um, you know, filled with social distancing and, and you know, sort of a much slower uh, economy. Um, you know, that, that, that would be, uh, you know, sort of uh, quite, quite, quite 
unfortunate. I think we will look at this, uh, you know, out five years, more or less like the flu, uh, you know, sort of a worse version of it. Uh, and, you know, uh, we will learn to live with that. Uh, that. That's not how I wanted to end this interview. Um, but but and I'm not trying to be optimistic or pessimistic, but but I, I think we will find a way to get through.